Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com and today I want to show you a simple method you can use to record your acoustic guitar and vocals at the same time using two microphones. We've already looked at how to record this with one mic. If you have two microphones available to you, I think this is a better way to go. You're going to get more control, more separation of the two instruments, which means when you mix this track, you have a little more control over things like how to use EQ and compression on the individual elements. We'll look at that in a later video. So today I want to show you what equipment you need, how to set it up, how to use it, and let you hear what it sounds like when you've got it set up the right way. Today I'm using two microphones. I'm using a Rode NT1A. This is a standard large diaphragm condenser mic, one of my favorites, go-to. It's a great acoustic guitar microphone, and I've got it focused on the acoustic guitar. I'll talk about placement in a minute. For the vocals, I'm using a trusty Shure SM57. This is a $99 dynamic microphone. Like I put it on guitar amps and snare drums. It's actually great for vocals. And I'll tell you why I'm using it over a condenser microphone in a minute. But those are the two mics I'm using. I'll be using an Apogee Duet interface. It's a two-channel USB audio interface. For doing two mics, you need two inputs. So you're going to have to have an audio interface that uses at least two microphone preamps. Some really affordable options are the Personas Audio Box USB. This is a great little interface. Or even the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Lots of choices in the budget range for audio interfaces. So you just need two inputs. And for my software today, I'm using a free DAW called Pro Tools First. Now, the secret to understanding how to record your vocals and your guitar at the same time is this is not going to be perfect. There is going to be bleed. It's impossible to get complete separation. The only way to get complete separation on the guitar and vocal is to not do it at the same time. That's a legitimate way to work. It's called overdubbing. You record the acoustic guitar first and then the vocal second. Nothing wrong with that. But there's something wonderful about capturing a performance of the vocals and the guitar together that gives you vibe in a way that sounds more real. A lot of times artists, if you're recording someone else, they actually feel more comfortable playing and singing at the same time. So it's very helpful to know how to do this. And I think you might enjoy it yourself as well because it's quicker, easier, and it can have a more natural vibe to it. The secret then, if there's no way to get rid of bleed, is to minimize bleed. And so the first way of minimizing bleed is by angle. Now I've got the acoustic guitar microphone here pointing down at the acoustic guitar. So this is a cardioid microphone, meaning it picks up primarily on the front. And the front of this microphone is this side. This would be the exact back of the microphone. This is the exact front. So it is not looking at the guitar. It's looking down at the guitar, which means it's going to reject more sound behind it, which will include my voice a little bit. Again, it won't kill the voice completely in this microphone, but it will minimize it. And I'm just doing the opposite here with the, the 57 pointed at my, my mouth. It's angled up at my voice as opposed to straight at me or down. So by angling it up, it's going to reject sound behind it, which means it'll reject, you know, some of the guitar. Now, an easy way to think about this is microphones are a lot like flashlights, okay? If you take a flashlight, how do you know what's going to be lit up with a flashlight? Well, whatever you're pointing it at. Very, very similar with microphones. It's a simple concept, but it'll help you know where to place the mic. With a cardioid polar pattern, which all microphones have usually, and some microphones will give you multiple polar patterns, so switch to cardioid, it's going to pick up sound primarily in the front. That means treat it like a flashlight. If you want to record your voice and not much of your guitar, angle it at your voice and not angle it at the guitar. Same is true with here. I want to pick up just the guitar, so I'm angling and I'm pointing it down at the guitar and away from my face. Very simple concept that might help you. Now, the reason I'm using a dynamic microphone for the vocals is because these will reject the guitar a little bit more than another condenser, okay? Dynamic microphones just take more air, more sound to move the coil inside the microphone, so they're not nearly as sensitive as like this road down here. So that is great for vo vocals because they'll pick up the vocals just fine. They'll sound great on vocals, but it really will minimize a lot of the guitar and it'll just zero in on my voice. So that's another way to minimize the bleed and get separation is to try a dynamic for one of your instruments. In this case, I chose it for the vocals. Now to set this up, all you need is an XLR microphone cable. Well, you'll need two of them. This is the standard three-prong microphone cable. Plug one end of the cable into your microphones and the other end into your audio interface's two microphone preamps. For any condenser microphones like our Rode NT1A today, we're going to have to set up what's called phantom power. Very simple to do. It's an 
extra bit of electricity that goes through the cable. Your interface might have a button that says 48V on it. In my case, I have to use a piece of software to access that on the Duet. So I'll hit that button and then I'll be able to get signal on the Rode NT1A. Once the cables are plugged in, you've got any phantom power set up for any microphone that needs it. You'll just wanna adjust the gain level, the actual knob on your interface to get a healthy signal going into your software. The way I like to do this is while I grab the knob and turn it, I take a look at the software and look at the meters and make sure that while I'm singing or playing, I'm only singing about 50 to 75% of the way up the meter at its loudest. That way you know you won't be recording too hot of a signal. As far as where on the guitar you've got the acoustic microphone placed, this is up to taste, okay? I have it angled right at the bridge, so where the, the neck meets the sound hole. If you want less body, you could angle it a little bit more so it's pointing at the 12th fret or vice versa. So play around with that side sweeping angle. Again, one angle is where it's pointing so to minimize the voice. The other angle is across the guitar to get a little bit different tones. So you almost have like a tone knob depending on how you adjust the microphone across the guitar. Also, in terms of distance from the guitar and voice, key here would be closer is better to minimize the bleed. So I've got the acoustic guitar mic about six to eight inches away from my guitar. And the same is true with my vocal microphone about six to eight inches away from my face. But experiment from there. Final little piece of advice is for the vocal microphone, use a pop filter or a windscreen of some kind. Again, just like you're recording any kind of vocals, you really need this to minimize the plosives and the air so that it has a more professional vocal capture. All right, so what I'm gonna do is play a little bit so you can take a listen to what this setup sounds like. While I'm playing, I'm gonna solo the vocal mic so you can hear what that sounds like and you'll hear a little bit of bleed of the guitar. And then I'm gonna solo the acoustic mics. You can hear what that sounds like with a little bit of bleed of the vocal. And then back to both of them together. Take me on a crazy ride And give me more than I can There you go, that's what a simple two mic setup can sound like when recording your acoustic guitar and vocals at the same time. Now to help you out with your home studio and home recording journey, I've put together a powerful guide. It's called my six steps to a radio ready song guide that walks you through all six steps that every major song has gone through to get it to sound the way it sounds when you hear it on the radio or on your favorite record. So if you wanna have the inside scoop on how to make your song sound as good as possible, then you need this guide. And it's absolutely free. It's my gift to you for watching these videos. So just go to RadioReadyGuide.com, get your download. It's going to walk you through all six steps. Now, what we did today is recording, and that's just one of the six steps. It's very important, but just one of six. So it'll walk you through the six steps, give you all kinds of tips and tricks and techniques so that you can maximize every song idea you have and turn it into a Radio Ready release. So go check it out at RadioReadyGuide.com as my free gift to you. And on the next video, I'm gonna walk you through how to mix what we just did, how to take your two mic acoustic and vocal performance track and mix it, make it sound better. And if you're curious on how to do all of this with one microphone instead of two microphones, check out that video as well. As always, subscribe to the videos if you enjoy them. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on another video real soon.